Hello everybody, I'm Dave Deacon and welcome back to another FAQ Q&A thingy. A show that definitely needs a proper title. This is just going to be a small Q&A video series I'm going to do from time to time whenever I get enough questions. So I better get this stuff out of the way first. If you have any questions for me about literally anything, I don't mind. You can submit any question, regardless of how ridiculous it might sound. Uh, in the comments below, obviously. You can also go to my Twitter, my Facebook fan page, and my Tumblr to submit questions. Uh, all the links will be in the description. And just because I'm giving out links, you might also want to check out my Patreon page. There's a there's a few uh, rewards there and stuff. You might want to check it out. Um, I probably won't go over it now, but if you're feeling generous, check out Patreon. Donate if you like. It's, it's entirely up to you. I'm not pressuring anyone. So anyway, let's start with the questions. Anonymous asks, I remember when you used to have a site called Rise of the Critics. What happened to that site? And will you ever make a site similar to the previous? I was curious because it closed down. Right, Rise of the Critics. It's a kind of complicated issue. Um, I used to be affiliated with a, a website called Rise of the Critics, obviously. Um, some people might know that, some people probably not. Um, and essentially, it was it was basically, uh, as you can probably tell from the, the title, it was a, a website for critics like myself to upload videos. And it was, and I, I was uh, given sort of uh, moderator access to put to put to put my videos up there. Um, and to have them prominent on the the main page, and yeah, it it was going for a while. I uploaded about I can't quite remember about ten, and eventually the the whole thing kind of fell through because uh, the the guy who was running it uh, just stopped running it basically, and it just it just basically fell off the internet. Um, and it, it's completely out of my hands, really, because I had really nothing to do with the upkeep or anything to do with the website, it, which is a shame because it was actually, it was getting places, it was going there, but it, it just fell into obscurity, really, and there's not much else to say, there's not much drama, it's just the simple fact that it just, it just died, um, yeah, that's about it, really, and if I will ever make a similar website, um, probably not, because I probably think trying to compete with YouTube, for example, is a fool's errand. It's it's pointless. But I am planning to make a website for myself. Um, you will all be notified when I do that. It's 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 in the works. It, it'll be a a place where I can host all my videos. Um, mainly because you know. Uh, blips pretty much dead it'll, it'll be dead officially on the 20th the the plan right now is to to make a, a website for myself that's a bit more permanent because right now all I'm using is Facebook and Tumblr but yeah the, the that's the plan and it'll be I'll be hosting all my videos and I'll probably be using a different player than YouTube because I'm pretty sure you're all familiar with how YouTube fucks over people who make videos about movies so yeah, that's the plan, and yeah, I hope that answered the question. Neil Hagen asks, Since you reviewed the Hellraiser series, what are your opinions on the other successful Clive Barker films, such as Candyman and The Lord of Illusions? Now firstly, I'm not done with Clive Barker films, because there's quite a few I am very interested to look at. Uh, when it comes to the actual question, Candyman is definitely on the list. I will definitely be looking at that sometime. I'm not too sure when. It's it's a bit iffy. But yeah, I'm very interested to do Candyman, even though I know absolutely nothing about Candyman. I will admit that now. I know I know absolutely nothing. So I, I, I'm i pretty much going into it blind, and I will do all my research then. Because uh, I, I honestly don't have an opinion right now about Candyman. And Lord of Illusions. Yeah. I actually don't know what that is. Yeah, it's uh, probably, um, I probably should have looked it up before answering the question, really. But 
this is my genuine reaction. I, I don't know what Lord of Illusions is. I will lock it up. But right now, um, Candyman will do. Lord of Illusions, I don't know. Because I don't know it. But I shall have a look. And we shall see. But you can definitely look out for Candyman coming soon. And Neil Hagen asks again, with the new James Bond film Spectre coming out later this year, are you going to review a James Bond film sometime? Firstly, I really hope I pronounced that name correctly. If I didn't, I'm really, really sorry. But that that's just the way it looked like for me. So yeah, sorry if I mispronounced that name. But when it comes to James Bond, James Bond is a very interesting um, series. It's It's definitely something I've been meaning to look at. But... The only problem is, firstly, there's there's a shit ton of them, um, which is which is not exactly feasible because I don't know anyone who would want to sit through, God knows how many there are now. So I'd probably look at a select few, um, and probably probably ones you're not really expecting. For example, I will probably be looking at Casino Royale. Now, I don't mean the Daniel Craig version. I mean the one with Woody Allen and. Orson Welles. Yeah, that, that, that's a thing. It's, it's basically a, a parody of James Bond and the, and the spy genre. It's, it's not very well remembered. Um, so yeah, I, I probably want to look at something like, something like that, a bit, bit more obscure. Or maybe um, the uh, Sean Connery film, Never Say Never Again. Because that's technically not an official James Bond film. So yeah, there's there's a whole load of interesting different movies out there with the sort of the James Bond moniker that's not official. So yeah, there, there, there's probably a, a bit of material to look at quite a few there. I'll have to see. But it's a, it is a very daunting thing to look at. Because I mean, you know, I did nine Hellraiser films and that was that was quite a quite an epic for me. That was that was crazy because that that took a really long time because I I had to take breaks because I couldn't do all nine of them at once so it's probably gonna be the same thing with James Bond I'll probably do a few a few here and there um, whether I eventually do the entire series I don't really know but we shall see um, but there are a few I will definitely be looking at eventually again I know I I know I'm not giving you much you know I'm not I know I'm not giving you much definites here but it's it's my schedule is not really a schedule. It's more of a yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> it's 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 very off the cuff. So it's it's really just what I feel like doing at the time. Stephanie Sermon asks, "What first got you into doing your reviews, and how do you balance daily life with the process of doing the reviews, filming, editing, etc?" Now I'm fairly sure I've answered a question similar to this before, so I apologize if I'm repeating myself. But yeah, first of all. What got me into doing these these videos? Basically, I watched the film and wanted to say something about it, and that was uh, the Crow, City of Angels, which is a video I really really hate. Uh, oh, people keep telling me it's good, but I just don't see it. So yeah, but yeah, it, it was just the fact that I just I never went into this thinking anyone would watch it, really. It was just the fact that I wanted to say something about a movie, and eventually it just moved on to other movies that I've that I've known and, and enjoyed, because I like the Crow film, the original Crow, um, and I like the the third one, Salvation. I think it's a very long time since I watched those films. Two and four, utter shit in my opinion. Uh, so yeah, it, it, I just wanted to say something about. Uh, about sequels that I actually thought would be good, but were not that good. Because the first movie is 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 brilliant. It's it's a fantastic movie. Um So yeah, it was just it was just a sort of a big ball of disappointment that I needed to throw onto the internet. And that's basically it. Uh what was the other part of the question? Oh yes, that was it. How do you balance your daily life? Um I don't. I don't really have a daily life. <laughs> Uh, my basically when I'm working on something, it's essentially write the script, film it, and edit it. And writing takes the most amount of time. Um, takes about a week, maybe more, depending on the script. Filming is 
is two days of filming. I film audio and I film the actual on-camera stuff uh, separately. So I do one on each day. It, it just spaces out, makes it makes it a bit easier to tackle both. And then editing takes... It, it's got a lot better editing, actually. So editing can take about a day. Um, and yeah, and once that's done, you just start all over again. That's basically it. I don't really have much of a daily life. Simple as that. But I don't mind, really. I'm, I get to do this and I get to hopefully entertain some of you. I do hope that some of you are entertained and not just tuning in to look at the idiot. Although maybe, I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's basically it. I do have to sacrifice doing some things to make sure a video gets done on time. And even then, I'm always not that good at it. I'm, I'm trying to get better at that. The, the videos are, there's, it's difficult. But I'm trying to get better, I'm trying to get back on a proper schedule. Uh, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see how that goes. And yeah, that's basically it. So right now, it's mostly just focus on the videos first and everything else is secondary. That's, it's probably not what you want to hear if you want to go into this, but if, if you want to do this full time, you got to treat it like a job. But that's not to say it can't be fun, because it is, and it is really, it's a really great thing to do. Um, but you do have to treat it seriously. You can't really do it on and off. You, you, like you can't, like I used to do a video a month. That that was never gonna fly. You'd, you'd never get any people. You have to be very, um, you have to be very strict with yourself. You have to get videos on time and you can't leave huge gaps between videos because it just, it just doesn't work out in the long run really. So yeah, I hope that answered the question. Screenplay Archaeology asks, is there any particular set of films you've wanted to review but have been unable to for whatever reason? Screenplay Archaeology is a podcast, you might want to check it out. A little bit of a shout out there. Um, and yeah, this is a very, very good question. Um, very interesting question because I've been thinking about this one quite a lot. There is actually quite a few series I've been very hesitant to look at. And usually it's either because um, I really hate hate the series and usually usually if I don't like a series um it, it gives it's more fuel to the fire it, it allows me to, to 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 funnel that but there are some series that I just can't stand and I I just can't I just can't sit through the movie which for someone critiquing it is not good you know I just can't sit through it like for example um just one off the top of my head Hostel yeah, no, I, that, I mean, it doesn't help that I'm not going in with any kind of open mind. I'm going in expecting shit, because I know for the most part, they are oh, shit, if I can show my hand a little there, it's, I just, I just fucking hate that series, and I very rarely find anything by Eli Roth any good. Um, usually, if his name is on it, I pretty much give it a pass. Uh, there are a few exceptions, though. Um, mainly because he had fuck all to do with the actual film. But, uh, yeah. There are some series that I just I just don't want to do because I just hate them. Uh, but there are others that I don't want to look at, at least not, not yet, because either I, I haven't looked up enough on it, because I, like I like to do a lot of research, and if I not so much go into it completely blind, because I can go into watching them blind, but if I know literally absolutely nothing except for a name, it's it, it it's good. That that's a good thing. Because then I'm not having any expectations. But the the, the biggest one that comes to mind is Friday the thirteenth. Um that is a that is a large series with a large cult following. And basically I don't feel I could do it justice at this point in time. It's a case of, I know the basic premise, guy in a mask kills people, but that's about it. I don't know that much. I don't know what happens in the films. I haven't read the actual plots and all this stuff. Um, so yeah, it's I, I'm very hesitant because I don't want to piss people off unnecessarily. That's not to say that I don't, because I don't intend to piss people off, but I know some videos will 
inevitably piss some people off. But I want to at least do it justice. I want to have my complaints as valid. I don't want my complaints to be, oh, I hate this because I don't understand it. That's a shitty complaint. I've seen people give that complaint and it's bollocks. I want to go into it saying, does this work for the series? Does this work for the characters? That sort of thing. And if I don't know that, it's it makes it difficult. So yeah, Friday the 13th is another big one. Um, on a similar vein, but not, not the same, is something like the Harry Potter films. I, I do want to have a look at the Harry Potter films. That is, that is definitely one I want to look at. But um, I'm pretty sure if I looked at it now, the fandom would tear me apart. Because I, I don't know enough. I haven't, I haven't read the books. I'm just going to say that now. I haven't read the books. Um, my only real research into the series is the movies and a little bit of information here and there about the actual about the actual films and about the books and all this stuff, but not a lot. And again, it's all about doing it justice. Because whether I like a film or hate a film, it's all about doing it justice. It's all always about giving it a fair shot. Because I like to be as unbiased as possible. Um, uh, and that's not to say I don't have any bias whatsoever. I do. But I like to think that I never just say, I hate this because I hate this. Because that's not a criticism. That's an opinion. And that's straight opinion. There's no reason behind it. At least you haven't given one. So I like to have a full-on reason why. You know, it's, it's a case of, if people look at it, they can understand my position. You know, it's, it's like, they can understand where I'm coming from, even if they don't necessarily agree with it. And I think that's the key as, with, with everything. And I like to think I do that for pretty much all my videos. And yeah, there are a few times where my, my personal, uh, you know, my personal opinion comes through. But again, I always back it up with some kind of evidence. At least I like to think so. Um, I'm sure somebody's going to come back to me and say something. But um, yeah, that that's basically why I'm a bit reticent. Because eventually, I'm pretty sure I will look at every kind of movie ever. I mean, that that's, I mean, it, it, it kind of depends on how long the show goes for. But... You know, that, that's kind of the plan, is to look at literally as much as I can. And, uh, yeah, it's all about giving it a fair shot. Uh, I hope that question wasn't too... Uh, that answer, rather. I hope the answer wasn't too rambling and nonsensical. Oh, I kind of went off on one. Sorry. Bruce Kukowski asks, What is the capital of Assyria? Assyria, of course, no longer exists, but through the ages of its existence, it actually had four different capitals. The first being Assur, the second being Nimrud, the third being Dur Sarukin, and the last one being Nineveh. Ha! I bet you didn't think I'd have an answer to that. And our last question comes from Jason Brett. I couldn't help but notice the mobile suit Gundam figures on your desk in your later reviews, and I was wondering if you were an anime fan. And if you would consider reviewing anime movies like Akira, Ghost in the Shell, etc. Yeah, firstly, with the with the Gundam figures, um, I just like building them. I've rarely watched any Gundam, but I just I just like the models and I like and I I like building them because they're they're uh, they're model kits basically, and and I just enjoyed that. So that that's that mystery solved. But when it comes to anime itself, um, it's kind of difficult. Because, again, it's a case of me not knowing a lot about them. And it's not even just the actual series. Sometimes it's just a case of not knowing enough about Japanese culture to get it. Because, you know, there, 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 there are some anime out there that is just so steeped in Japanese culture that it's very difficult to critique it. It's the same way with doing things like foreign films. You have to be really au fait with the culture to to know a foreign film and it's the same with anime because anime is essentially you know it's it's the exact same thing as a foreign film and anybody who says it's that anime is less than you know some kind of hoity-toity foreign film is talking bollocks in my opinion uh, but there are a few i would probably like to look at i mean akira is a good one akira is a good place to start um but again it's it's difficult because a lot of my complaints might just be, well, that's how they do it in Japan, you know? So it's it's difficult. 
Again, I'm not giving you very definite answers here. I apologize, but maybe. <laughs> That's all I can say really when it comes to anime. If I find one that I really have something to talk about, then yeah, but well, right now there are no plans to look at anime as such. Um, I think the, the thing I ever closest came to doing anime was when I did that uh, Van Helsing prequel cartoon thing. Um, I think you could class that as anime, maybe. Even though I just called it a cartoon, which is heresy, apparently. Um, so yeah, yeah. The, the only thing I say that is, uh, is a maybe. So there you go. I hope I answered relatively well and I wasn't too rambling and talking bollocks like I usually do. And yeah, that, that, yeah. So if you have any more questions, like I said, submit them in the, the regular places. The, all links are in the description. And again, um, I don't mean to, I don't mean to harp on about this, but I don't mention it that often. If you are feeling generous, please check out my Patreon page. I will probably be updating it soon anyway, because of the whole blip fiasco. So yeah, um, check out the Patreon page, donate if you wish. It's not a big deal. But also, you might want to consider joining the Facebook page because that's where a lot of updates will go. The Facebook and the Twitter is probably the biggest place for updates and just just random bollocks I'm going to talk about, really. Um, yeah, I put up a load of uh, trailers I might be interested in, for example, or just just general bits of trivia when, when fucking shows get cancelled, for example. Um, so, yeah. So yeah, if you if you if you want, you can join the the Facebook page, you can join the uh you can follow the Twitter page and the Tumblr page as well. Uh the Tumblr is is very new. Uh but I will be putting more stuff on there. And if you go there now, you, you can probably find um I did two little blog posts, just just two articles about about things in 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 the movie industry. So you might want to check those out, see what you think. Um so yeah, and and there'll be little stuff here and there, so I I would recommend joining whichever ones you wish to join because things will be happening there that are not necessarily happening on YouTube. So that's pretty much it. Um, don't really know how to finish videos. Bye.